Hi, my name is Callie and I'm going to be a senior at the Dalton School this fall. This is my typing robot and so I'm going to do a little demo. Um, I'm going to have it type my name, so C-A-L-L-I-E, and then it's just going to type it back to me. A-L-L-I-N-D. My milestone, my second milestone, is getting the robot to be able to map the keys, move to the keys, and then use this rack and pinion to actually be able to press the key. So this milestone um, shows a progression from just the physical robot to actually having a lot of functionality, which I'm really happy about. Um, so first what I did is I used inverse kinematics um, to use to map the uh, keyboard. What that is, is inverse kinematics means I want to go to a specified point P, here's how I should get there. Um, this has a lot of really cool applications, like in animation software and in like industrial robots. Um, so what I use is I use some trigonometry, and this is um, set in a coordinate plane such that this servo is my origin, this is my x-axis, and this is my y-axis. So what I did to map the keys is if I take, if I take say, key A, I say, oh, hey, it's 10 centimeters in the, in the x-axis and maybe 7 centimeters in the y-axis. I put that into my inverse kinematics formula. It does some little math, and then it figures out, okay, my shoulder servo needs to be at this angle, and my elbow servo needs to be at this angle, so that I can be at point A. Um, so that was really fun, and it worked. It was great. And then it stopped working a couple days later, which was kind of puzzling because it worked so well. So what I sort of figured out was that there were probably three issues. First, there's a lot of weight on these servos, especially since they're connected to these arms just by their horns. They're not, uh, this one is connected through this arm by like these screws, which is sturdy, but it's connected to this arm by its horn, which it's gonna limit some of the accuracy of the turning. Additionally, um, since I'm doing a lot of trigonometry and there's a lot of decimal points um, in my calculations, some accuracy can be compromised there. Thirdly, these are hobby servos and they do not cost $100, so they're not going to be the most accurate servos out there on the market. So that was the inverse kinematics problem. Then I found a solution. I decided to hack my own code. Um, so what I did is I said, hey, so I told you to go, you know, I put the, for A, um, that the coordinates were 10, 7, as I said before, but you're not really going to A. So why don't I say 10.5 and 7.3? And oh my god, it ends up at A because the math did a little mumbo jumbo that changed. Um, so that was really exciting, and now it works pretty well. Um, next, I had to figure out this finger issue. Um, and that was a challenge because what it's doing is it's basically coming from up here and doing a very, very targeted linear motion. And I would expect that linear motion is pretty easy. Lines are the first thing I learned in math. Lines seem simple. But in midair, just suspended by one thing, linear motion is really, really difficult. So what I first tried to do is I tried to use the circular motion of the servo and then try to, you know, hit the key kind of like a lever of sorts, but that didn't have enough um, force to push the key and especially not enough force because it wasn't hitting the key head on. Then I tried to do a pulley, but that would just have way too much inertia and there would be no way to confidently know that it was going to hit the key every single time. Um, so then we wanted to do a glue stick linear actuator, which is a super cool hobby project. But then we got a rack and pinion, and that seemed a lot more reliable. So we did that, um, and that's working super well. I just need to iron out a few kinks um, in the next couple days. Um, so that was really that was really difficult. I never really had a mechanical challenge like that to deal with, and. I learned a lot about just like trying a bunch of different things. Um, there were there wasn't that much like analytical thinking to it. It was like this might work. Who knows? Let's try it out. Let's try to fix it a little bit. Um, and it was 
really different from like the coding work I do when I troubleshoot, which is what's the problem, how can I fix it very analytically. Um, so my next steps are um, making the rank and opinion work a little bit better, and um, I also want to incorporate some motion control. Um, motion profiling will make it less uh, berserk and a little bit more um, controlled. Uh, yeah, that, I'm really excited.